I'm Tiger Height, and I'm here to make WWE Raw and Pro Wrestling Majestic again. This was overall a good Raw. I mean, seriously. Sorry about the delay in the video. I had something to do last night, so I just finished watching Raw like 30 minutes ago. So this wasn't necessarily a match. This was scheduled to be a match, but Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax kicked off Raw by basically beating each other up. And that was great. It was a great show of energy, and the crowd responded well. But then Raquel Rodriguez returned and attacked Nia Jax. Well, she attempted to, but kicked Shayna Baszler by accident. But then you have the return of Rhea Ripley, who got a huge pop. All four women were beating each other up. This was great. Really good energy to start. And I think people were disappointed about this, so I think they called the audible, and this just worked. Sometimes a little bit of energy to kick off a show really keeps that momentum going. And that led to Rhea Ripley cutting a promo about Judgment Day. Because as she was gone, basically Judgment Day has been in an upheaval. And Rhea says, even though there is no actual leader of Judgment Day, I think somebody needs to take the reins. And Rhea is a great representation of a leader. So she first yelled at Damian Priest for Dominic Mysterio losing the North American champion. And I was like, why? Dominic Mysterio was the one who was wrestling. So that led to her talking to Dominic, to where apparently Rhea can make matches and basically make a rematch for tomorrow. Well, technically tonight. Technically? No, actually, today's Tuesday. And Rhea basically gave Dom the ultimatum. You win the title or you're not coming home to mommy. That would be my motivation to freaking get this title back by hook or crook. It just was awesome. Like the, the attack leading to this, leading to all of it, it gets a full thumbs up. So our first match match was Alpha Academy taking on Imperium, and Gunther gave Imperium an ultimatum regarding their placement next to him, basically because they've been, they've been losing. They've been a bunch of losers, where Kaiser's apparently supposed to babysit Giovanni Vinci because Giovanni Vinci, I guess, is incompetent. Kind of a weird thing, but sure. And they had a good tag team match. I liked this. I liked the ending. I liked the little slip where... Uh, Otis's foot was grabbed onto to interfere, and it was a running kick to the face on Otis for the victory. Good, solid, clean tag team wrestling. Nothing fancy, nothing special. Will it get them anywhere? Probably not, but did I enjoy it? You're damn right I did. I'll give it an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. Maybe a little more time, and maybe if Giovanni Vinci picked up the victory, I probably would have given it a full thumbs up, given that he is the main person in this storyline. But I'm, I'm going to give it the Orange Cassidy. Up next was Cedric Alexander and Bronson Reed. At first, I thought, oh, this is just going to be a squash match. No, Cedric hit moves. The crowd was getting into it. Bronson hit Tsunami for the win. Was it the best match in the world? No. But what is it, a squash? Hm, not necessarily. I'll be nice here. I'm going to give it an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. So you're going to see this picture again. This is the contract signing between Tommaso Ciampa and Gunther for the Intercontinental Champion. Now, they never had a date on when it was going to be, but my God, Tommaso Ciampa showed some fantastic energy. Gunther, the smug champion, was ooh, oozing confidence, oozing swag. This was badass. I know, I use swag unironically. God, man, let me age myself. And Tommaso Ciampa convinced Gunther for this title match to happen tonight. And Gunther accepted. This is the main event. This was just done so well. I loved it. It was so good. And I just love that they're giving these guys who you don't think can talk an opportunity to really showcase what they can do. Good emotion. Lots of good energy. Crowd responded well. Good story told. Thumbs up. Up next was Ivar taking on Xavier Woods. Fun match. Good action. People were getting into it. I really like that instead of putting Ivar on the shelf because Eric is hurt, they're putting him in singles matches. Why don't other, why don't they do that with all the tag teams? Seriously, if one guy is out, the other guy doesn't have to necessarily be on the bench because there is a tag team. They did it with Carl Anderson last week and they're doing it here. Kobe was a commentary for Xavier, which is fine, totally fine. And it was backwards for Xavier to win. But Ivar didn't look weak. He attacked immediately after. Kofi tried to help, but he got absolutely destroyed. And then it was a moonsault for Ivar de Santal. 
Love it. Absolutely love it. This is just so good. People are really digging this moonsault, and I'm loving that WWE is keeping up with this. And also, it was a solid match. I'll give it an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. It was close to being a full thumbs up. I think a little more build, something a little bit different, a promo would probably have been beneficial here. Because the funny thing is, Ivar can also talk. Seth freaking Rollins segment, and I was shocked that they really laid it in with Michael Cole. Not in a bad way, but in for praise. Why? It just was very strange. Now, does it sound retiree? No. Is he going to take some time off? Probably. And this was just a great way to do this. Shinsuke cutting promos in Japanese just feels right. And then he comes out, attacks Rollins, brutal attack, and counted. One through ten. This was really, really good. Rollins getting up a couple of times after, because it wasn't like the original attack was brutal. It was like one shot, Rollins got up at eight. Then Nakamura hit him with a chair. Got up at like nine. And then it was the brutal attack for the 10. It showcases how good Rollins is, even though this back injury apparently is a thing. I love it. This was thumbs up. Great stuff. Also, Michael Cole has been with WWE for 26 years and missed two, two shows. That's insanity. Any company would be freaking lucky to have Michael a Michael Cole as anything, literally anything. The dedication on that guy is second to none. So the original match was going to be Tegan Knox, Becky Lynch for the NXT Women's Champion. But because Becky Lynch got her elbow hurt, there's like a huge gash in her elbow. It has to happen now. They scheduled the title match for next week. Chelsea Green and Tegan Knox. it was there. People really didn't care about it. But what can you do? They had to call the audible because Becky got hurt. It was the shiniest wizard for the win. Mm. Orange Cassidy, thumbs down. That's being nice. They, they worked hard. There's some decent stuff here, just no heat. Also, Chelsea Green, keep in mind, is still one half of the women's tag team champions. I, oh my god, this Drew McIntyre shit's great. I mean, this is exactly what he needed. Drew McIntyre coming out, cutting a promo, saying that he is no longer going to involve himself in battles that he did not start, nor is involved in directly. Perfect. The Miz comes out, McIntyre's like, can you shut up so I can finish what I have to say? The Miz does not like that. And then Drew gets really pissed off. Match was made, so we had the match. Miz in the suit versus Drew McIntyre, who was dressed to compete. Uh, Drew McIntyre, using an exposed turnbuckle, really still hinting on that heel turn. And the post-match promo after... Oh, oh, also, by the way, no Claymore. He was going to do the 3-2-1 Claymore, but then he stopped. Ooh, juicy. God damn, it's good. And he used Future Shock DDT. How can I give this any more praise? It gets a full thumbs up. Drew McIntyre, God, he needed this. He needed this so bad. I can't tell you how bored I was with Drew. He's showing a lot of different things here. Good promo work. He can be funny. He can be a heel. Awesome. And finally, our main event for the Intercontinental Champion. We have Gunther and Tommaso Ciampa. Holy crap. What a great match. I loved the ending. Everything about this was awesome. Tommaso is such a great wrestler. Gunther is on a different level, and people were so respondent to this. I loved it. I couldn't I couldn't keep my eyes away from it. And it was two power bombs, sleeper for the pass out. Not a tap out, not a pin, a pass out. Good, good booking right there. Then we had all of Imperium attack, except for Gunther, who just basically fucked off. And then Tommaso Ciampa ran in, and they were going to showcase their double team move from DIY, but the feed cut out. I can almost guarantee you that was not supposed to be the case, but it is what it is. Kind of AEW-esque production there, WWE. Probably need to get to work on that. But that was Raw. Let me know what you thought about not only my video, but Raw in the comments down below or right over here next to me, depending on your watching this on. Follow the link in the bio or in the description where you can see all of my social medias and also TikTok and YouTube, depending on where you're watching this on. Subscribe, follow, and as always, be majestic.